Greetings, one and all. It is great to be with you, uh, even though we have changed the venue. I'm still Mert Shane, pastor at Kiyoki Chapel, and we are decided to change the setting a little bit today uh, for several reasons. One is that there's no sense in heating up the, the sanctuary and turning on all the lights when we can uh, still be in worship uh, in different places. And so today we are in front of my fireplace uh, having worship with you today. And so we hope that you will enjoy this worship service regardless of the location. Our announcements, uh, I don't have anything major. I'll be sending out a, a newsletter soon uh, for our activities prior to uh, the Lent services. Uh, we are in the process of planning, and so we hope that uh, we can provide you with some sense of worship and fellowship in this time of uh, the season of Lent. So let us begin with our call to worship. We gather to worship God, who alone can heal us and make us whole. Open our hearts, that you may transform our lives with your healing touch. We gather to worship God who alone speaks the word that calls forth life. Open our minds that you may transform us with your authoritative word. We gather to worship God in spirit and in truth. Open our spirits that you may transform us by your powerful spirit. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks that you have made yourself known to us in the person of your Son, Jesus. Grant that our worship today both honors his name and, through his mercy, feeds our spirits with what they long for most, an awareness of your presence with us in every aspect of our lives, to guide us, keep us, and protect us in our life's journey. We ask humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. For our children's sermon today, I want to ask the children, what is two plus two? Naturally, you said four. Well, what is one plus three? Again, you answered four. So, if I put down these letters, C-A-T, what does that spell? It spells cat. So how did you know that? Where did you learn that? You learned it from probably from your parents or from your teachers. And so today's lesson is all about teaching. And so the one that we turn to the most in our teaching for our church is what lessons did Jesus teach us? Well, Jesus taught quite a few lessons uh, in many different ways. But he basically taught us about the love of God. He also taught uh, things by showing us in different things that he did. Uh, he turned water into wine. He walked on water. He healed the sick and the afflicted. He did a wide variety of things in teaching us about the love of God. And so we give thanks that Jesus came and taught us how to live, how to love one another, and how to stay in love with God. So let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to earth to teach us about God's love. Amen. Our prayer today, we want to lift up uh, all those that are battling uh, illnesses and those that have passed on, uh, we want to show that uh, we have truly 
appreciated all that others have given us uh, during this time. And so let us pray. intervening God through Jesus the Christ your will and purpose for our lives was made known we praise you for being with us as your divine plan unfolds in each life and in the church we experience your presence in both ordinary moments of work and worship in which your spirit sustains and guides us and in the extraordinary moments in which surprising acts reveal your will and intention for your people today as they did through Jesus long ago we are often amazed and ever humbled by Christ's faithful love and awesome deeds and we ask what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? May we hear and heed your response. Holy One, you established your realm anew on earth and in the advent of Jesus. By your authority vested in him and his obedience to your purpose, the power of evil was overcome. Sin and death were defeated. Yet we live as though this were not so, as though human power were supreme, as though we could save ourselves. Oh God, we confess the fears that grip us and the credence we give to false prophets and worldly wisdom. As members of this society, we are both the oppressed and the oppressors, and greatly in need of your deliverance. Forgive our sin, and set us free from all that would hold us in bondage. O oh God, we lift up those that you have called home to be with you, whether they be pastors or friends or family members or loved ones we give you thanks for their lives and we ask your blessings upon those that are sick and ill bless those in our hospitals and nursing homes that are in need of your care we pray for all those that care for them our doctors and nurses and aides and therapists we pray for all those that are our essential workers, our first responders. Bless them. Oh God, as we deal with this pandemic, help us through the difficult times and guide and direct us as you would have us to go. Give us the strength and the knowledge to carry on. Help us to care for one another as we care for ourselves. Bless our church family near and far. Help us to care for one another, to stay in the contact, to show your love in all that we do and everywhere we go. Keep us safe as we deal with this pandemic and struggle to be stuck inside. Help those that are dealing with this virus. Help us as we patiently wait for vaccines. 
continue to help us to keep hope alive and not be held back by sin and despair. Help us to always give you the thanks and praise both this day and always. Help us to always show your love wherever we go and whatever we do. We pray in your precious Son's name, Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue to give thanks for all the many gifts that you have sent in. Um, keep in mind that you can give to our general fund as well as to any specials uh, for human relations and so forth. We have all these special Sundays and we give special gifts and so please feel encouraged to give. Let us pray. Gracious God, from your generous hands. We receive all that we need and more than we dare ask. In gratitude, we return to you a mere token of your gifts to us. Grant that these gifts and we ourselves may be used in service toward all whom you love, that your graciousness may be known by all. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to read our scripture today from the book of Psalm, chapter 111. Hear this word. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and righteous uprightness. He sent redemption to his people he has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. At this time, I want to introduce the Reverend Bum Koo Chung, who used to be uh, a part of our community and spent some time at Cherry Lane United Methodist Church. And he is now the district superintendent for the West District. And so he is going to provide our sermon for us today. And so we give God thanks for that word. Uh, so welcome, Reverend B.K. Chung. As you are gathered to worship our God, 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My name is B.K. Chang, and I'm the superintendent of the Wild West District of the Eastern Pennsylvania Conference of the United Methodist Church. Today's scripture is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were amazed at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. In today's scripture reading, we see Jesus teaching in the synagogue, and the people who are listening to Jesus' teaching are very amazed. Verse 22 says like this, the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the scribes. The contemporary Bible, the message, translates the same verse in a bit different expression. It says, they were surprised at his teaching, so forthright, so confident, not quibbling and quoting like the religion scholars. The people who listen to Jesus' words were amazed because his teaching was not like the scribes' teaching. The scribes were the experts of the law and they were recognized as the religious scholars so that they interpreted God's words and taught people in the synagogue. As today's scripture says, there were people at the synagogue as usual. However, these people were experiencing something new that they never had experienced before. They were amazed by Jesus' teaching. They were surprised by Jesus' teaching. They were touched by Jesus' teaching. They were moved by Jesus' teaching. They were excited by Jesus' teaching. They were changed by Jesus' teaching because Jesus' teaching had a power. Jesus' teaching was so forthright. Jesus' teaching had a real authority. Jesus' teaching was authentic, and Jesus' teaching was alive. The scribes were the religious scholars. However, they were false teachers. They used God's words to justify their own interests and benefits. They were hypocrites. They acted differently from what they were taught. Their teaching was enough to make people feel guilty about what they were doing. But it did not have power to bring the salvation into their lives. Their teaching provided people with some useful standards to judge and criticize other people's lives, but it did not work 
to find their own problems. As we are Christians, as we are readers and interpreters of the Bible, we always have to be aware of the possible mistakes that we could make like the scribes did. When we read the Bible, we have to apply God's word to our own lives, not to others. When we read the Bible, we have to use what we read as a mirror to reflect on our own lives, not others' lives. We don't have to criticize other people using the Bible as a weapon. God is the only one who judges people. For this reason, we have to first listen to God before we talk about God. We have to carefully study God's words to interpret the God's words. We have to spend enough time praying and asking the Holy Spirit to help us understand what we read. We have to be more listeners than speakers in front of God. Jesus taught people, and the people were amazed by his teaching. And suddenly, Jesus met a man with an unclean spirit. Kids like to say, you are so evil. When I was a youth pastor, I told kids not to say those words to their friends, but they still said, you are so evil. One day, I was wondering myself about the meaning of the evil. Many theologians, scholars, define evil as the negative and destructive power that opposes and resists the will of God and the plan of creation. When we say you are so evil, it does not mean that you are the evil being, but it means that you are controlled and driven by the evil forces. As Jesus was teaching at the synagogue, there was a man with an unclean spirit. So Jesus met a man who were controlled by the evil forces. There are many different kinds of evil forces in the world. Evil is a force to block bringing justice into the world. The evil powers seek war to destroy the society and the world. The evil powers will do whatever it takes to destroy the church, the body of Christ. The evil powers exploit children, women, and elderly people who are very vulnerable. The evil powers are the wrong economic systems which create a deep gap between poor and rich. This is the evil that Jesus wants to cast out from us. Look at the first reaction of the man with an unclean spirit when he saw Jesus. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. This evil spirit recognizes Jesus as the Holy One of God. However, he does not welcome Jesus. Just right before this event, Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 20, Simon, Andrew, John, and James met Jesus. And they were called by Jesus. After they met Jesus Christ, they left everything, their lives, jobs, and family, and they immediately followed Jesus Christ. However, when this man with an unclean spirit met Jesus, 
he reacts very differently. Instead of accepting and following Jesus, he rejects Jesus. And he complains against Jesus saying, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Yes, Jesus came to us to destroy our sinful attitudes and sinful minds. Jesus came to us to destroy our old sinful life and give us a new life. Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, came to us to destroy our sin and give us a salvation and an eternal life. How many times have we refused Jesus coming into our lives? How many times have we been afraid of being destroyed our status quo by Jesus Christ? How many times have we said no to Jesus when Jesus came to change our lives? How many times we said no to Jesus when Jesus came to destroy our past sinful lives and give us a new life and salvation? In the verse 25, Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And finally, the unclean spirit came out from him. In this story, we can experience the love of God one more time. First, Jesus embraces the man who was controlled by an evil spirit. Even though the society excluded him, Jesus embraced him with love and care. Jesus didn't ignore the man with an unclean spirit. Second, Jesus heals this man, casting out the evil spirit from him. Jesus gives him a new life. Jesus gives him a new hope of life. Jesus brings him the salvation. Jesus brings him the liberation. Jesus loves us this much. After seeing all these things, people were amazed. One more time. And they asked themselves, saying in verse 27, What is this? A new teaching? Yes, this is a new teaching. Jesus' teaching is a new teaching. It is very different from the scribes' teaching. Jesus' teaching has the power. Jesus' teaching is so forthright. Jesus' teaching has the authority. Jesus' teaching is authentic. Jesus' teaching is alive. Jesus' teaching changes our lives. Jesus' teaching touches our hearts. Jesus' teaching liberates us from our old sinful life. Jesus' teaching brings us a new hope. Jesus' teaching brings us the salvation. So are we ready to accept Jesus' new teaching? And now for our benediction. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. Go forth in peace. Stay safe. Uh, stay healthy. And may God continue to bless you both now and always.